Previously on Science for All. Are astronauts up there in the satellites weightless? Do they feel gravity? And if you really, really, really ponder this question, you should get to Einstein's happiest thoughts. And now the answer. Hovering above the Earth. That must be one of the greatest experiences ever. Up there, in the space station, not only is the view amazing, but as well, you get to experience this unique feeling of weightlessness that is out of our reach on Earth. Well, that's what I'm told. I've never been there myself. But wait a minute, is that even true? Are astronauts up there really weightless? Well, Derek has a wonderful video on Veritasium about this very topic. As it turns out, astronauts are only a few hundred miles above the Earth. They've barely left it. In comparison, the Moon is hundreds of miles away from the Earth. So, compared to the Moon, astronauts are really stuck on the surface of the Earth. But since the gravitational force of the Earth is strong enough to pull the Moon, why wouldn't it pull the astronauts when these are so much closer to the Earth? Why would the astronauts be weightless? Why would gravity not act on them? As you've guessed, if the gravity of the Earth acts on the Moon, it definitely acts on the astronauts as well. In fact, the astronauts undergo roughly the same gravitational pull as we do right here on Earth. So astronauts are not weightless. At best, they feel weightless. But why? How could they undergo gravity and not feel it? Well, that's a deep and fundamental question that would lead Albert Einstein to the happiest thought of his life. But before getting to Einstein's happiest thought, I should tell you about the Newtonian explanation for astronauts' feeling of weightlessness, which is the one given by Derek on Veritasium. Since all objects in free fall fall at the same rate, the astronauts and the space station fall all together. And that's why astronauts feel weightless. They're floating with respect to the space station, and the space station is all they can see. So according to Newton, astronauts feel weightless because their immediate surrounding that undergoes the same gravity mislead them into thinking that gravity is not pulling them. Now that works, but it's not what I would call an elegant explanation. Plus, it raises another important question. Why would the astronauts fall at the same rate as the space station they are in? Well, in Newton's mechanics, this only holds if you assume the somehow puzzling equality between the gravitational mass and the inertial mass. The first one appears in Newton's law of gravity and says that more massive objects have greater gravitational pulls. The latter appears in Newton's second law of motion and asserts that greater forces are required to affect the motions of more massive objects. A priori, there's absolutely no reason why these two masses should be the same, but somehow Newton claimed that they had to be the same. But, Einstein asked, why on Earth and elsewhere in the universe would that be the case? Why would gravity be dictated by inertia? As the story goes, Einstein was once walking in the streets of Bern when he witnessed a man falling from the top of a building. Einstein ran to the man and asked him, Sir, 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 did you feel gravity? Now this story is probably not true, but somehow Einstein got convinced that a man in free fall could not have been feeling gravity, just like the astronauts up there. And he came up with a revolutionary new explanation for that. They are weightless, not because they are misled into thinking that by their immediate surrounding. They are fundamentally weightless because there is no such thing as weight. And that's because gravity is not a pull. Gravity is not a force. 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 And that, in his own words, was Einstein's happiest thought. 
Gravity, not a force. But what does that even mean? To understand what Einstein meant, we need to live and breathe physics, literally, like Einstein did. What are you feeling right now? What are the physical forces that you feel right now that are acting on you? Well, if I really think about it, all I really feel is something on my feet, something that is pushing on my feet. It seems to push me upwards and this push, Einstein reasoned, is making me accelerate upwards. And it is this upwards acceleration that we usually think of gravity. In other words, what we usually call downwards gravity can also be called upwards acceleration. Like the acceleration in an elevator. When the elevator is accelerating downwards, my weight inside the elevator is smaller. Now according to Newton, this measurement is smaller because I'm doing it wrong. But Einstein begs to differ. My measurement of weight in the elevator is fundamentally right because gravity in the elevator is actually smaller. How weird is that? The gravity inside the elevator is determined by the acceleration of the elevator. In fact, when the elevator is in free fall, that is, when it accelerates at 9.81 meters per second squared compared to the ground, the gravity inside the elevator simply disappears. In which case, my measured weight in the elevator would be zero. I would have no weight. I would be weightless. More generally, Einstein's happiest thought was to realize that acceleration and gravity were just two sides of the same coin. This is called the equivalence principle and it's one of the greatest ideas anyone has ever had. It's absolutely brilliant. For instance, using this equivalence principle, Einstein shed a new light on Galileo's mysterious law of falling objects. Remember? Galileo has proved that all objects must be falling at the same rate because it was inconsistent to assume otherwise. No doubt, that was brilliant. Really brilliant. But not that enlightening. Instead, Einstein argued that the reason why the free fall of objects is so hard to analyze for us is because we usually study it from the perspective of the ground. And the ground, he argues, is not a natural frame of reference to analyze motion. In technical terms, it is not inertial. The ground is always accelerating upwards because of the pressure of the lower layers of the Earth. Instead, Einstein argued, it's much more natural to study the falling of objects from the viewpoints of the falling objects because, at least in vacuum, these objects undergo no force. Not even gravity, because gravity is not a force. So, their frame of reference is inertial, and in their frame, these falling objects are still, and it is the ground that is accelerating upwards. In this new picture of reality, at last, it becomes clear why the ground will reach the falling objects at the same time. Objects in free fall reach the ground at the same time because none of them is moving in their frame of reference, and it is the ground that reached them at the same time. Time. This is absolutely fantastic! And in the end, more than any of the experimental evidence that I cannot reproduce myself, it is this wonderful explanation for Galileo's mysterious law of falling objects that makes me want to believe in Einstein's general relativity. Go Einstein, go! Einstein had this happiest thought of his life, the year was 1907. It was a great thought, a wonderful thought, but it was just a thought. To go further, to transform this thought into an actual theory of physics, Einstein knew that he would have to rewrite entirely Newton's theory of gravity. This was very, very, very bold, and Einstein was still a nobody at that time. Plus, the great Max Planck, even though he quickly recognized Einstein's genius, strongly advised Einstein to give up his quest for a theory of gravity. Gravity just seemed too difficult to him. And Einstein's happiest thought, however brilliant it was, 
It was just a starting point. To go further, Einstein would have to master the calculus of tensors and the geometry of curved spaces. He would have to be more creative than all the scientists that came before him. He would have to think deeper than all the physicists of his time. In short, he would have to become the greatest scientist of all time. Was Einstein up to the task? So I hope you've enjoyed this video that Einstein's happiest thought has led to some at least happy thought in your mind as well. If it didn't, it's definitely because I didn't explain it well enough. And you can either watch this video again, maybe it will uh, enlighten something in you, or you can also watch these space, PBS Space Time videos which are really amazing. In addition, Gabe uh, on these videos gave some slightly different illustrations of the equivalence principle which are extremely enlightening really really I strongly recommend to watch them now as I already said it when Einstein got his happiest thought he was still actually light years away from an actual theory of gravity in particular one troubling consequence of the fact that the ground is accelerating upwards is that because the earth is round it seems like it should imply that the earth is expanding outwards well it doesn't does it so how does gravity prevent the earth from expanding or more generally how does einstein's gravity really work so how does einstein's gravity really work this is what i want you to think about for next time in the meantime you can check my science for article on gravity where i go through all of the falling objects uh, thoughts experiments uh, from galileo to newton to to Einstein. I've also put a link to this PBS Space Time episode uh, by Gabe on uh, his gravity an illusion where he also explains this equivalence principle. Please, 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 if you've enjoyed this video, please, please, please share this video. It's very important for this channel that you share this video, that you show it to your friends. You can give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel. It will give me motivation to go on with these videos. And I hope I'll see you next time.